this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com, another exciting garden update, and I'm so happy it's finally sunny here in California. We've been getting actually a weird rain spell here in June, but the sun's finally out. It's shining. I'm nice and warm, and we're ready to work in the garden again today. So what today's episode is going to be about is these guys right here. Once again, these are my wine barrels sitting in my driveway. I have, I don't know, about 12 of them lined up in the driveway where I don't you know park a car and I have the extra space to grow food so I want to let you know that you can grow food even if you don't have a lawn if you don't have any garden space get a wine barrel they're great investments depending on where you live here in my area they're about twenty dollars depending on where you live uh, you know might be fifty dollars you could also use whiskey barrels if you don't have those and they are nice because they're made out of wood I like them a lot you know you could even go ghetto and uh, you know, get steel drums, cut them in half. You know, I would encourage you to look for ones that were used, for, you know, for food grade or food grade, had food in them previously, or even plastic drums, you know, 55 or 60 gallon drums, cut them in half, and basically you can make large planters out of them and put those over your concrete driveway or put them over a sidewalk, in a patio, or wherever you are so that you can grow food where you weren't able to before. So, for longtime viewers, you guys know what I planted in here. This goes back to December 10th, approximately, my December 10th video, uh, 2010, was planting 45 garlic cloves that were already sprouting in this very wine barrel here. So, man, time flies when you're having fun. Approximately six months have elapsed since that time, and, you know, this garlic literally looks like crap. Look at it. It's growing, all these are like, you know, turning yellow, they're falling over, and you know, that's when you know something's up. <laughs> so I was walking by the other day, I saw, hey man, my garlic looks like shit, what's going on? And you know, garlic will tell you when it's ready to be harvested, basically, you know, this, this is now ready to be harvested. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dig it up. Now the interesting thing is, I planted this at one point, and then about a month or maybe two later... I planted the garlics over on this side so you could see a real nice comparison between these guys that are you know turning yellow and falling over to the guys next to it who aren't quite as old and once again this is the soft stem garlic there are mainly three kinds of garlic out there there's basically a hard stem garlic a soft stem garlic and an elephant garlic which technically isn't a garlic I really don't like the flavor of elephant garlic and today in this episode, we're going to talk specifically about the kind I'm growing, which is the soft stem garlic. So besides letting the garlic plant tell you how and ready when it's ready to harvest, because it just basically falls over, uh, you know, how else can you know when it's ready to be harvested? Well, most garlics are usually ready, depending on the variety, of course, between 90 and 120 days. And I have a bug on me <laughs> so you could tell by the day so if the number of days have elapsed and all the growing conditions are right your garlic should be ready because if you harvest your garlic too early then it's not gonna have nice big bulbs like you want and if you harvest them too late then what's gonna happen is the bulbs are gonna start to separate and they're not gonna store as well that being said the right time to harvest the garlic is when you want to harvest it because you're growing it and when you're growing it you're in control Maybe you want to use nice, tender, young garlic that's not fully mature as a spring garlic. Or you want to use the scapes or use the greens as, you know, garlic greens instead of using onion chives or something like that. But, you know, that's the beauty of when you're growing food. You get to choose when you want to harvest it, whether it's early or late. Now, in this case, we're going to harvest these when it's in the right time to harvest it and actually save it and preserve it so it'll pretty much last me throughout the rest of the year. I mean, I'm not a big garlic eater, and actually this is probably one of the first times I've grown garlic on this scale, and if this produced 45 whole heads of garlic from the 45 cloves, I mean, this should be enough to last me easily the full year, and I'll probably have something to give to friends. I'm not really a big fan of garlic, and basically over the years I've learned that, you know, things like garlic and onions can be irritants to our system. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, John, isn't garlic and onions so good for us, and... Well, yes, on one hand, they're really good for us. They have things that are good for us. But on another hand, they're not so good for our system. People that live in yogic traditions, you know, basically uh, garlic and onions are seen as irritants. And it messes up their chi or energy and, and all this kind of stuff. And actually, at a health convention I went to, there was a panel with all these experts on it. 
and all these experts couldn't agree on anything, but they all agreed on one thing, that garlic passes the blood-brain barrier. And when, that, when it does that, you know, most of the people said that it's not necessarily too good. Now, it could have some health benefits in small quantities, but if, let me tell you, if you take straight garlic and basically put it on your skin and put some tape to tape on the garlic to your skin, you're going to wake up next day with second degree or maybe third degree burns. Now, you might be thinking, hey, John, how do you know that? Because <laughs> I did it to myself one time. I'm like, man, I got some kind of infection on my neck. Oh, garlic's must be anti, you know, bacterial, antifungal. Let's just put some on my neck and tape it on there. Well, the next morning, man, I woke up with these burns, and you might be able to still see the scars on my neck. Not many people know that. But, yeah, so, I mean, if garlic can do that to the outside of you, think it's what, what it's doing to you on the inside. So that being said, I rarely eat garlic, maybe once a month, if that, and maybe even less than that. I, I rarely use any garlic or onion. So that's another thing that I don't necessarily grow, and basically that's why. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and harvest this garlic. First, I want to give you guys a close-up shot of what the garlic looks like, you know, uh, what this stuff looks like when it's starting to go bad and what the baby stuff looks like. It's actually really cool. So here's the garlic. That's not looking so good. You can actually see some kind of a mold growth, a black spot, and it's just dumped over. I probably could have harvested these maybe a month ago or so, but I uh, got a couple weeds growing up in here. But, you know, it's definitely time, and you can see some, some of the little bulb popping out right there. Let's go next door. You know, these ones were planted maybe about a month or two after this first wine barrel. And you can see here, I mean, these guys, look at that. These guys look nice and ready. These guys could go probably a little bit more, but you could see they're nice big bulbs in there. And, you know, you were getting a little bit of browning on the bottom leaves and some browning on the top. And, uh, you know, it's, we'll, we'll let these go we'll probably, you know, maybe about another month or so before we harvest them. We'll, let, we'll make sure they start to dump over pretty good before we harvest them. They could go a little bit more. The bulbs aren't totally looking maybe as large as they could be looking. So next, let's go ahead and harvest this garlic. We're going to get in here and harvest this garlic. Some people may use a fork or a shovel to harvest garlic, but in a raised bed situation like this, you could use a trowel or some other kind of digging instrument. But nature's best digging instrument are our hands. You know, we have tactile feel. We won't, you know, crush through a piece of garlic, you know, because we're not steel and we're not going to damage any of the product that, you know, we've taken so long to grow. Now, this has been grown once again for about six months. So instead of getting my nice clean hands dirty, got some nice cool garden gloves. So we're going to go ahead and put on these garden gloves. Hey, you like the color purple? Put these on and let's harvest some garlic. So let's basically carefully, uh, you know, move some of the soil around. And man, once again, when I put these in, these were like single cloves of garlic that each went in one hole. And there's 45 of these in this whole bed so it'll be interesting to see how many actually how many cloves we get wow look at that okay so we're gonna just shake off the dirt there all right so there's a three heads of garlic let's keep going I'm just gonna go ahead and, and dig right through dig through here and there's a massive amounts of roots in here basically you just want to shake the dirt off and uh, once we got all these harvested we're just gonna lay these in the Sun you know just for a few hours to get some of them the moisture off until we basically uh, shade dry them a little bit later so as you can see it's really easy to harvest garlic you're just you know going through all the all the soil here and picking out all the heads of garlic one at a time trying to get all the dirt off and separating out each head of garlic so I'm carefully digging through this barrel to get all the garlic bulbs out because if I miss a bulb even a small one like this what could happen is this could basically uh, stay under the ground and then grow back next winter so I really don't want that to happen so I'm systematically going through this bed and digging down, I don't know, probably about six inches to make sure I'm getting it all and just going little bit by little bit. And you can see here, as I go down, I'm just 
trying to get all the roots out and there's there's a nice clove of garlic or a nice head of garlic right there then I'll try to like get all the dirt off as I can all of it's not going to come off easily still a bit moist it was raining and then I'll just go ahead and put this down in the pile and go for the next one so uh, let me go ahead and finish this up so here's the last bulb coming out should get all the dirt off there it is so basically once you're done harvesting all the garlic you're gonna want to maybe do a last dig through through the area where you grew them because you know what you don't want any heads of garlic or even cloves left in the bed because what will happen is it'll come back next year and maybe you want that maybe you don't so I'm gonna just look through here for any additional cloves or heads that I may have missed I think I pretty much got them all so we're back so I finished harvesting all the garlic and if you remember back to that other video I don't know if you watched it or not maybe it's on the sidebar on YouTube uh, the title is like planting 45 garlics plants in a wine barrel uh, you know from the original 45 you can see here here's my yield all in this one hand and here's a couple stragglers oh a couple stragglers right here and including these small little stragglers I actually got 45 heads of garlic that I'm harvesting now literally just six months later and I mean literally garlic is one of the easiest things to grow basically I got the cloves that were already sprouting at the farmers market planted them in here and you know what pretty much I forgot about them and just came back and look what I'm harvesting I really had to do no pest control or nothing on this this was grown in the winter time when it was raining so the irrigation system was off pretty much uh, carefree and easy to grow that being said I want to share with you a couple things that I've learned from growing this garlic so the first thing is every head that I grew is a little bit different size that could have been because of the heads that I grew were different sizes or maybe because I planted them too closely I don't really know but or I planted them at the wrong time actually because next door some of the heads over there are a lot larger than these guys and these guys those guys were actually planted later so maybe because I planted these when it was fairly cold out they didn't do well normally you're supposed to basically plant them before it gets cold I planted them when it was definitely cold and you know why did I do that well you know I like to play around and experiment in the garden and I encourage you to do that too the reason why I actually started growing the garlic is because I was actually at a farmers market in the original clip you'll see when I was at the farmers market walking around the farmers market and seeing what they were selling and one farmer was actually selling sprouted garlic so I guess you could eat that spreaded garlic but for me I'd much rather plant it and see what happens so with the minimal investment of a couple dollars I bought a bunch of sprouting garlic and I planted it and turned it into this I mean this is definitely a couple pounds of garlic and garlic does sell for some you know some money it's one of the more expensive uh, vegetables to buy so I'm happy I grew this is definitely a really worthwhile experience but the other things that I've learned are simply this is if you harvest your garlic at the right and appropriate time what will happen is you know it'll basically stay stuck on much like this one and you want to not disconnect it. you want to let it dry just like this because when it dries like this each one of these paper things here are basically gonna dry and form the uh, wrapper uh, to the garlic so that it'll stay preserved now if you wait too long to harvest what will happen is simply this this one is a uh, pretty much uh, pretty much too late to harvest what happened is this was the tip and what happened is the tip basically came off and you can see it pulled off part of the uh, plant with it and when that happens then the garlic is fully open like this and when the garlic's fully open like this this is not going to store or dry as well because you're not going to have as many basically paper layers of of the, the paper to store it another one that's even more close is this guy I found in the ground that he didn't didn't have the paper on it and uh, what would happen with this guy if we left it in the ground more basically these cloves would separate out into the ground and then these cloves would grow into more plants I mean that's why garlic is around because it could divide and conquer I mean it literally takes this divides and sprouts new plants up and that's how nature works so you want to get it definitely before the stage where it's getting like this because it's not going to store as well it's also gonna be harder harder to harvest and you know to harvest these you don't necessarily just want to pull up on the stem because they might break so you want to try to get underneath them and lift them up so that you could get the whole stem and everything intact so if you ever have cloves of garlic that you bought to eat and you see like it start sprouting and little tips are coming out you could still eat that stuff 
but I'd encourage you to plant it even in a little pot in a windowsill in your house because it will grow and it will make garlic. It probably want, it might not be as big as this, but you could always clip back and eat your garlic green. So that's a, that's a tip on what you should do with some sprouting garlic. Plant it instead of eating it. Now what I'm going to do next is set these out in the sun for maybe a couple hours uh, to basically just get some of the surface moisture off. And you know, you don't want to dry these in the sun. That's definitely not a good idea. I'm just going to put them out in the sun for a little bit to get some moisture off. Then I'm going to put them in a cool, dry place. You know, maybe uh, in the shade, uh, in a garage that's nice and warm. You don't want to put it anywhere too moist. The rot, you want to basically uh, get some of this moisture out of the garlic so that they'll be preserved, so that they will save. Once you have the moisture level down, and you know, basically you're going to want to store them once again in a cool, dry place. I don't recommend storing storing them in your refrigerator. It's too moist in there. Recommend like a nice uh, cool cellar uh, in like a cloth or burlap sack. Don't store them in plastic bags. I mean, better is a paper bag even. Plastic bags, it'll just c collect the moisture and they'll rot quicker. But that being said, I don't eat a lot of garlic. And you know, it's up to you if you want to eat garlic or not based on my research. You know, I choose not to eat a lot of it. And the reason why I do eat it sometimes is because I believe garlic should be used as a medicine, not necessarily like a food, although a famous philosopher said, you know, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. I think garlic for me is not necessarily a food I would sit down and eat a lot of, like collard greens. I could eat a whole bowl of collard greens. I don't know if I could eat a whole bowl of garlic. I'm not Italian. Um, but uh, I think it is an excellent to use at a, as a medicine, you know, for specific purposes in some instances. And that's why I don't eat a lot of it. But if you love garlic, go for it grow garlic plant garlic I mean it's really easy to grow and you saw how easy it is to grow in a wine barrel from start when we planted it to finish in the harvesting once again this is John Kohler with growingyourgreens.com remember keep on growing your food at home you can do it and garlic is one of the easiest things to grow